the fifth and final season of Jurassic Park's animated Netflix show arrives this Thursday. I've been very excited for the show, and ahead of its release, we have been lucky enough to get a chance to see the 12 episodes of season five. My name's Jack from Jurassic Outpost, and I'm joined with Chris, and we're going to talk Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Season five. <laughs> season five. So, I mean, so, what did you think? Um, yeah, no, uh, that that is a loaded question because to kind of like understand my appreciation of the show, you kind of have to go back to where where it started. And with the first season, I think one of our biggest takeaways was, wow, it was a lot better than what we expected. And uh, we really liked that first season. And then you had that just absolutely phenomenal third season, which really felt like a proper Jurassic Park show. Um, and then the fourth season really changed the game up quite a bit and it really took a a sharp turn into some very new directions for the plot um and even some of the characters were a little bit surprising in the direction that they went and now we are following up a season that really threw a curveball towards not just the plot but to its viewers and the question is can it wrap it up and can it wrap it up in a satisfying way and I guess my biggest takeaway that I would say to that is I enjoyed the ride of watching these, like the characters. It really wraps up the stories of the characters and brings them in some really great new directions. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed these characters, their development, their evolution, their relationships, um, their end game, so to speak. I enjoy all of that a lot. And I became a lot more invested in these characters than I ever expected to be. And in that sense, I very much enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I share the same sentiments as you. The sort of journey of the whole show started as something that I felt was very true to Jurassic and, and trying to stay true to its roots. And while you may not agree with the direction it went, season four and season five, um, the characters are the most important thing. And I do feel like season five, for me, is all about the characters and their journey mm -hmm. feels like it's, you know, it really shines this season. D don't get me wrong, the plot, definitely outside of surviving the larger things that are happening in the plot it's definitely become very absurd in these final two seasons and I, I think i would have liked it to be a little bit more toned down a little bit more grounded but the truth of the matter is is it really does put the spotlight on these campers and their their evolution as people their their growth as people and what they've been through. And in that sense, I think that it just did such a phenomenal job of bringing this character, this story of character development, um, and really capping it off. And I think that that managed to make it an enjoyable experience for me, even though yeah. the larger plot like wasn't really for me. There's a lot of moments this season that really emphasize that point, really make <laughs> you really kind of connect with the characters again. Um, yeah. Let's talk dinosaurs this season, because obviously, aside from the characters, the other important thing are the Brad axes. Um, <laughs> the dinosaurs. <laughs> Good old Brad axes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are a lot of dinosaurs in this season are there a lot of new dinosaurs technically there's not even one new species of dinosaur in the season technically um, but come because on the, the, there's, there's there's a new species you've seen it in the trailer um and they've released a clip the the nothosaurus which is quite a cool colorful looking reptilian triassic period nothosaur um it's this semi-aquatic aquatic animal and it's very reptilian and weird and creepy and cool and i thought that it sequences that it every like every moment that it had in the show i thought it was like wow this thing's really cool um i think people will like that one yeah it definitely feels like it's inspired from kenna kenna's work with jurassic it feels like something that could fit into the original the, the, the paint job the paint job reminds me of the ornithosuchus um from the unreleased kenner toy uh it's it, that's a really big deep cut it's probably happenstance but it absolutely it sort of does feel like that absolutely so what about the animation this season i feel like throughout the series it's been something that has even while subtle has changed the animation, mm -hmm. whether it's the style or, or the rendering or whatever it is that they're using, maybe the lighting is changing, but uh, something changes every season. And really? how do you feel about this season? Um, so uh, just to, again, to rewind back to the beginning, we were talking about this the other day, but how season one, a lot of their dinosaurs 
almost had this like they almost look like stop motion models and i mean this in a great way i thought that season one made some of their dinosaurs look like they had a practical stop motion puppet that they are like animating beautifully um and since then i think that they've become a little bit more 3d and a little less practical looking but their motion has become smoother um i honestly preferred that stop motion look of season one i think that some of those scenes with toro were phenomenal like it just looked so physical and real same with the uh, mosasaurus um but that's not to say that what they ended up with is not good. What they've ended up with is good. And uh, you pointed out, it's a lot more consistent with the, uh, the animation style of the campers. Season one had a very unique uh, visual look with the dinosaurs next to the campers. They were very drastically different. It worked. It just, there was a lot more detail, it seemed almost in the dinosaurs. In the dinosaurs, yeah. I feel like now, at, at least at season five, it's, it's become a lot more blended in that regard. Uh, it feels like they're a lot more in place with each other. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the seat, the show looked its best in season three and in season four, if I'm being entirely honest, but there, again, this is something that you pointed out. There's just some really nice lighting that this new season did. And while it might not have as refined of cinematography as season three and season four, um, there's especially some like really just beautiful scenes where you just get like this warm sun soaked lighting, just pouring through and backlighting things. And it gives it a very, you know, it's very, there's some very like nice, golden hour type of sequences in this show that look really beautiful and they use those nice warm hues to really accentuate it or sometimes like in moodier sequences as well yeah and that's something that uh is a benefit of the manticore mm -hmm. island you know whether or not you agree with going to a, another island the the idea of the different biomes and what they can achieve and the lighting environments inside of those it really does lend to some Although, visually stunning sequences with these campers i will say season four took advantage of the the biome diversity a lot more than season five did it did um, it did season five felt like you're kind of like in a lot of small central hub areas that weren't quite diverse um but again, that's because the story itself was now, for the most part, focusing on character relationships and development. Um, and there I is a lot of retreading on the same ground as well. It, the, it's not, it's the story calls for it, so it does make sense. It's it, just it, you do feel like you're not visiting any entirely new locations this time. Yeah, it, it's strange in that sense. It, it, it definitely feels like season four, part two, almost, rather than season five if that makes sense. And I'm just saying this out loud for the first time. I've literally not said that any other time, but so I'm not sure if it fully makes sense, but <laughs> the, the more I think about it, it does just feel like it's closing off season four. It's also closing off the entire series, but it certainly feels like very much each season set out to do something new. And I don't think this season quite set out to do something new. It set out to end the story. Yeah. Season four definitely introduced us to a, an entirely new thread of, of story and and you know this had to wrap that up mm -hmm. let's talk about the barbasol can so that was in the um that was in one of the first press photos from entertainment weekly that they put it out and we know the barbasol can is in the show um and yeah that's about that's about where it is did did you think that it was handled well do you think it was needed the Barbasol can is obviously something that ties um, deeply to some to Dominion and something that fans are excited for. So while I probably agree with you that it probably was unneeded, it's a cool little nod. And I think yeah. this season... I think uh, it's kind of disappointing. Um, I think this that, season that, has a few good nods, though. I think this show... Yeah, but the show would have been better off and the story of the Barbasol can would have been better off if what was in the season is not in the season. Because it's so, like after all this time come on that's how you're going to do it and it's just also tacked on it's three seconds bump boom and done and move on and never think about it um yeah i, I think the barbasol can was very needless and i think if you're going to do fan service you need to do two things you need to make it logical and you need to make it cool and i felt like this was neither logical nor <laughs> with cool. well so the barbasol so can is always really cool. like it was really like thrown away like real quickly i was like that I, I literally kind of like my mind was a little like little shell shot from how silly that was. Um, but I mean, it doesn't detract from the show. It just detracts from something that people wanted an answer for for a very long time. And it's kind of just like it would just be better if it doesn't exist. And they could have like let another medium do it and give it its time of day. Um, but yeah, if I'm being real with you there, I was definitely let down. <laughs> 
So this is the end of Camp Cretaceous, but this was the longest season we had. So mm -hmm. do you feel like it benefited from the extra length? This was 12 episodes this time. Or do you feel like it was kind of treading treading along as we went? It could have trimmed it down because I think a lot of those episodes is just dinosaurs roaring at the campers, dinosaurs <laughs> roaring at the screen, and dinosaurs roaring at other dinosaurs. And it, sure. I kind of tapped out all that time that they used for character development was 100 percent awesome all the time they used for like kind of silly action i think that we could have trimmed a lot of that out um personally so i feel like um i feel like season five wraps up the show nicely and while i may not personally have been the biggest fan of season four the wrapping of that story is handled okay it's well uh, it's handled well and the characters and their individual journeys i feel like were really respected i feel like i went on a journey with them through camp cretaceous and season five gives gives me the closure that i was looking for i feel like overall it is a fitting end to this animated adventure which you know again i'll say it, you know at the beginning it really was it felt like it's a kid's show man but it really felt like it was for trying to be for as many of the fans as it could it felt very in line with the films it felt very it it did. It felt very. It felt like it was expanding upon the films, and it felt very tonally consistent with the films. It felt very logically consistent with the films. At least seasons one and three very much did. It really felt like it was celebrating them. Um, seasons four and season five, the best way I can describe them, they feel like a Saturday morning cartoon. They, like you, like you kind of mentioned, it's somewhere along the line. It's like almost forgot about the films and just sort of like I feel, yeah. So I feel like somewhere along the way, maybe at the end of season three, it, it kind of forgot that it was a Jurassic Park show. And I know it's a Jurassic World show. It's all part of the same family. Yeah. Um, so it, it's tough. But I feel like it was a heartfelt send off for the campers. Um, there was a lot that of fun this phenomenal. season. Yeah. I found myself smiling this season a lot. And mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot to enjoy. And I think fans of Camp Cretaceous are really going to enjoy this finale. The characters especially, they, they get some phenomenal, heartfelt, really cool sometimes very funny sometimes very tense sometimes very cute moments and i think that there's a lot of great dynamics that uh there's dynamics that tension forms there's dynamics that you know maybe more evolves and more happens and i think a lot of it is I, i'm trying to avoid spoilers but i think it's a lot of fun also i do want to touch on we didn't say anything but uh another dynamic that i really liked um without getting into specifics is you know, you, when season four ends and you've got Kenji reuniting with his dad and you really wonder what that relationship is going to be like, I found that to be a really, really very complex and great dynamic. It was a really good character dynamic between those two characters and it created, um, created a really good story in terms of personal character development and what began to play out. Again, some of the larger storyline stuff with like Manticore and the brads and the mind control i really tapped out on that and i really wish it would have went in a different direction um and it it really kind of i felt like it under undermined itself because it has such a realistic heartfelt story and you just have some really absurd distractions that are not in line with the films they're not in line with the earlier seasons and it's sort of like what is going on but you know what? It wasn't enough to take away from the journey these characters went on. And honestly, like, I really loved the way that season five, again, like, I just love the way it closed out. Like, the last five minutes of the, the season, I thought were just fantastic. I just really felt like every, just the way it handles itself is really well. The character dynamics are, and I really can't wait to talk about it. And I think there's going to be a lot to talk about. And I think uh, a lot of fans are going to be very happy and excited for what happens with these characters and how their relationships evolve don't forget to tune in to twitter spaces this wednesday july 20th at 4 p.m pst join the cast of camp cretaceous tweet your questions about season five and the show in general using hashtag ask jwcc and we will be there we are uh, moderating the panel so to speak um we, we will be taking your questions and passing them along to the cast and uh yeah hope to see you there it there's again there's a lot to talk about and i cannot wait to talk about more of it more candidly after y'all have seen the show but until then we gotta gotta watch our uh, spoilers 
and uh, let's just see what the future holds.